Welcome back to Talking Guitar, brought to you by the Carter Vintage Exchange and the North American Guitar in Nashville, Tennessee. Lindsay here, and this time I'm chatting with Thompson Guitar's inlay artist, Simon Haycraft, about the concept, design, and execution of three Wildlife Series guitars we'll be featuring in the coming years. First up, the Reptilian, or Rattlesnake OM, in Brazilian Rosewood and Swiss Moon Spruce. Now, whatever came into your mind when I said that, think again, because this isn't your typical stylized interpretation of an animal inlaid in pearl on the fretboard. It even goes above and beyond the usual headstock depiction that Thompson Guitars are known for, as Simon found clever and abstract ways to represent the essence and character of this iconic North American animal. We'll also, of course, learn a little bit more about Simon himself, discussing his journey from a formal visual arts education in the UK to finding his medium working on guitars in the Pacific Northwest. As usual, though this was a Zoom interview, Thompson Guitar CEO Christine Funk provided us with loads of photos and videos during the build process, so this is a great one to watch on YouTube for all the visuals. Either way, I hope you enjoy my chat with Simon Haycraft of Preston Thompson Guitars. How did this whole project come about? Was it something that Ben had come to you with, or did you guys come to us with it? I, I'm not sure that I actually know. Yeah, I suppose it might be good to have some background on that. Mm -hmm. Really, it started with me. I was working on an inlay. I think it was possibly an animal. You know, they're popular choices, uh, animals and nature subjects. But I was just thinking to myself, uh, you know, it'd be kind of nice to do you know, a special one or maybe a range where, you know, we could just really explore and I could do a little bit more rather than just something or an animal on the headstock or the or the fingerboard. Mm -hmm. And it was just a passing comment, really. Christine happened to be walking by and I just said it because it was in my head. Didn't really think anything of it really past that time. And then I think it was two months later and Christine's like, oh, this chaps on the phone from north america and he wants to talk about the wildlife series it's like what what you know i don't really know <laughs> what you're talking about but but she had obviously got in contact and you know put the idea out there and mm -hmm. and uh, he liked it and uh yeah so we had a conversation and uh that was really the beginnings of it i hadn't had any real ideas in mind but mm -hmm. you know once, once that was put in process then I you know I did start thinking about it and uh, and then it's kind of okay let's pull the trigger on it and come up with a design and or some thoughts on it and uh, yeah so that's that's how the idea came about and mm -hmm. then the subject matter is well it's a rattlesnake basically based on and I was working on like a private art piece so I do other art projects you know, when I have the time and I was uh, looking at a, a rattlesnake as an inlay or a piece of art or something like that, doing the drawings and studying that animal, I really got a nice appreciation for it and started to kind of admire it and like the colors, like the pattern. And then um, we wanted to pick out some wood for the wildlife series. And then I, I saw this really nice back and then it just clicked in my head and I got to thinking, oh, well, this rattlesnake would be kind of a cool thing on a guitar. Uh, it's a really good way to showcase different woods and different colors and different textures and just have, have a bit of a theme going on and, you know, just take it to another level, perhaps um, mm -hmm. artistically, let's say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just and it kind of evolved from there. It's been in in the works for about a year, I suppose. A lot of it is the design work and just figuring out what we're going to do, and uh, and then it's kind of evolved. And you know, it's not something we rush anyway. These kind of larger projects, we have a lot going on anyway. Yeah, I mean, you have some photos. There. Yeah, it's got a pretty good idea of what's going on. It's really a celebration of wood. Mm -hmm from from my perspective i mean there's i think with the inlay and the, you know the body and the neck and everything there's probably seven or eight different woods going on really know, yeah tough. yeah and um the design the the bold designs but they're uh they're just a vehicle really to showcase these woods these combinations that are contrasting with each other and complementing each other and it's a nice subject matter for that. Not glitzy, 
but it's yeah. bold. it's uh, it's not for the faint-hearted by any means <laughs> you know, in subject matter and look but quite earthy mm -hmm. no pearl or shell on it I think there is like actually a bit of black pearl on for the, the eyes or something for the snake's tongue and that is it oh, okay yeah yeah wood's very much a big part of this and mm -hmm. so basically you know I'll, I'll tell you it's a om mm -hmm. zillion back and sides back's really nice got this nice sapwood running through it which is kind of almost banded by this really dark streak and then some nice warm tones and then it goes back out dark and this kind of reflects some of the the imagery and the what's going on on the fretboard and the rosette and you know the color scheme mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really good match for that and then we have lace wood binding and I got this really tight figured lace wood that just reminded me of when a snake sheds its skin and it's just got that lacy look to it almost mm -hmm. transparent and that kind of the pattern running through it so I, I thought that would be a interesting wood choice for a binding not the easiest wood to work with in the sense that it's, it's got hard and soft properties Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's it took a couple of goes to bend the binding uh, just to get it just right. Mm -hmm. but I think, you know, all woods have their own little characteristics. So, you know, they're, they're, those are just challenges that have to be overcome. But but it adds a nice touch to it, too. And I, I put a nice big piece of this lace wood on the uh, back of the headstock, too. Oh, OK, great. Back cap. You know, going around the balut, and that mm -hmm. way you'll see a nice big section of this grain and this figure running through there. And then with the inlay, we have there's maple wood, walnut, some a uh, couple of different kinds of Brazilian, uh, myrtle wood, which I really love. It's you know it's that mid tone, mm -hmm. it's got golds and browns. It's it's just perfect for this. I even made a we made a um the top trim is just a piece of myrtle trim. Mm -hmm. Adds another texture to so you've got they they all have their own little figure and play on the light and the color and things like that. So um yeah, interesting palette to work with. Yeah. And continuing the theme throughout the guitar, you know, having something interesting to look at in every piece, you know, everywhere you look. There's, yeah. The fretboard, the, the rosette, the end graft, everything. Yeah, I want it all to tie in together and make sense. You know, mm -hmm. rather than perhaps doing a depiction of a snake on the fretboard, mm -hmm. or just a creature, really focusing in on the pattern and design and mm -hmm. in a slightly more abstract way, I guess you could say. Sure. Yeah. I and mean, there's so much to work with with those those keeled scales and just yeah, the different textures of of the animal mm. just as it is. And yeah, the woods are such a such a perfect choice for, I mean, basically imitating those natural colors of the snakes. So it's it's yeah. really, it's such a great combination. I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Yeah, thanks. It's almost got a Southwest vibe. Yeah. Which, you know, makes sense because, you know, a lot of those designs mm -hmm. are inspired by nature and, you know, what they see in the desert and a lot of um, native designs are very much like that. You yeah. see them three textiles. It kind of ties into that a little bit. Yeah, it's got that geometric, that natural yeah. geometric pattern. So that, yeah, that, that's it is really very southwestern, incidentally, yeah. for right. sure. But there are some pretty technical features on this guitar. I will say some of them were a challenge to do. The rosette being probably the most time-consuming part of the mm -hmm. guitar. Really, uh, designing and drawing that out um, to have this effect of scales overlapping mm -hmm. there's about a hundred rows of scales and then there's four scales in each row mm -hmm. decreasing in size as you go in the center because I had to actually make them coil round and that was the kind of the way to do it you know, mm -hmm. much like a, a snake and coil yeah and like that they have smaller ones and larger ones and it's kind of the same thing really but uh, yeah, having drawn that on the computer, I'm like, this looks great, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how am I going to make this? <laughs> you know, this is a might have bitten off more than I can chew. And but I came to the conclusion, really, the only way to make it so seamless and and tight, you know, and fit that circle was really to individually pocket each scale. 
and then pock it into that scale and install another scale. So they're all like put in one by one. Wow. Approximately about 400 of them. Jeez, that is so, so intricate. Yeah, yeah. So that was definitely an adventure. <laughs> you know, you're like halfway. It's like doing a marathon and you're four, four miles in and you're, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> And was heading for the nearest pub, but you know, I didn't do that. I stayed out of the pub and <laughs> finished the rosette, which it did actually take about two and a half days to create that. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just so intricate. Yeah, but the effect is is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. So uh, it was kind of worth it for that. Mm -hmm. There's really no other way around it to make it as clean and accurate. And then with the fretboard, I didn't really want to do that treatment as an inlay because that would really compromise the integrity of the board. Mm -hmm. Individual scales, you know, being made up of that, you know, it would probably fail. So with that, I decided to do the larger patterns and different woods. So they're epoxied in, they're locked in really tight. And then I came back and did some did an engraved program just going only so deep the scales so that gives that and then did a fill with the colored epoxy there so it's all locked in but it's it has the integrity rather than doing individual scales it, but it has the look of that mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes yeah, so some things like that you have to r and d and you know mm -hmm. really before you leap into it we decide and then the tail strip that kind of ties in the rattle Mm -hmm. some of those shapes that was a hard one to tie in it was quite an unusual thing yeah yeah this is quite an ugly looking looks you know like a worm or something <laughs> well I think I managed to pull off quite some nice aesthetic shapes in there yeah so yeah that just ties ties that in a little bit of banding to frame it things like that you have to make new jigs and figure all that out because it's a different shape different size mm-hmm not like our standard thing where we can just well let's just swap it out with a different wood mm -hmm. so yeah engineer a few things make them work for these particular ones yeah and then there's the, the snake's head on the headstock like coming from above so a little bit more of a surprise there as you go <laughs> up there actually coming down at you mm -hmm. yeah there's a little detail there for give it some context and just to right. show, show some more detail and wood a little bit more intricacy so yeah it's really moving along it's nice it's about ready to go into finish actually oh great it's probably gonna you know i've got to do some treatment on the lace wood fill that in with a different color because it does have some quite open pores in it mm -hmm. which present a problem in finish so things have to be pour filled but you can't pour fill it with the same stuff the brazilian oh, interesting. Is so you know you have to mask off and keep things separate there's you know, a lot of things in the finish that you take for granted when you buy a guitar and you look at the finish. And, yeah. But it, there, there's, it's kind of an un, unrespected or slightly or unappreciated area of guitar building, actually. When it hits finish, it will go into somewhat of a transformation in look, too. So there will be a top burst. And I'm thinking of doing like a stain, or what I call a stain burst, whereby you stain directly into the raw wood, mm -hmm. as opposed to putting a sealer or a finish on it and then a tinted lacquer. And, and this gives you a, a, a texture with a deep penetrating stain. You get this really silky look mm. to the little grain lines that are in it. It looks completely different than... An unstained piece and i think that's going to add some texture to it oh, cool. and then we'll tie, we'll tie in those colors too so it'll start you know dark on the edge and then these warmer colors and then up to the light so i think that'll help tie in things a little on the top too and soften soften that rosette even a little bit and then um on the neck i will do a, a burst treatment on that to tie it in with the body but um, it's a burst, not so much like a traditional neck burst, but the light will go up the spine, back of the neck. So that'll be the lightest part. Okay. The, and then it'll get darker to the edge, all the way up along the edge. Mm -hmm. That way you get a nice okay. contrast with the binding mm -hmm. as well that matches and mirrors 
the sides that you'd be seeing from the side. So you see a you know a nice dark heel as it marries with that Brazilian, and then there'll be like a mini sunburst around the back of the peg head. Okay, that might work really nice on that lace wood too. Yeah, it's a nice effect too because that I got that lace wood back cap. So those are, those are little things that that would be definitely extra above and beyond. But again, tying it in all nicely and yeah cohesive look and it's just a bit bit more special Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it sounds like that's going to be beautiful yeah and it'll spend a good month in there getting finished you know that that's the time like i say it's a time consuming particular part of the build that Mm -hmm. deserves attention and then we'll get up get into the string up process a whole nother side to building a guitar and (laughs) making a playable instrument Mm -hmm. and nice choices perhaps there you know with the bridge and the the tuners and you know see what we can haven't decided fully on that but you know maybe a bit of bone a stained bone or something something like that we'll make Mm -hmm. it yeah are you going to do any more um decoration on the bridge at all or is is the inlay mostly done at this point i kind of would like to it might actually Mm -hmm. need it balance it out yeah you know for that top definitely thought about it We'll get we'll pick a nice and that's a Brazilian fingerboard too. So we'll oh, okay. have a Brazilian bridge. So just to let you know. Mm-hmm. Well, the the snake on the headstock, that's a bit more typical as far as the kinds of inlays you've done in the past, the different animals and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. That that's that would give a little bit more of that. And some of the, mm-hmm. the future wildlife series, they may be more like that. Or mm-hmm. maybe a full scene on a or something like that. I don't know. They'll okay. all they'll all be different. Okay, I see. Has, yeah. Have you have you ever done any, any other guitars quite as intricately inlaid as this one, or is this one kind of a kind of hitting a new um, benchmark? Some of the, past, the, the last masterpiece series really pretty detailed in the inlay okay. with the koi and the um, the cherry blossoms, but this this is a, a little bit different. I've never done a rosette, but yeah, I've never done anything that took that long. All the stuff <laughs> or mathematical. Mm-hmm. It got quite geometric, and yeah, there's this a different way of looking at things. So. Yeah. Do you have any preliminary ideas for the the next wildlife series guitars? Well, as I had thought of maybe an otter as mm. like a mammal, just to break it down, we thought, okay, I'll do a, a reptile, a snake, you know, maybe we'll do a mammal, maybe we'll do a bird. Mm-hmm. North American subjects. I was thinking, you know, okay, we're working with North American guitars. Let's just nail it down to something because the choice is endless. Yeah. <laughs> subject matter you could do, you could go on forever. You could can't really stop at three. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I was thinking maybe an otter, something a bit more cutesy. <laughs> a rattlesnake, a little less woo. <laughs> <laughs> loves otters, right? That's true. They're 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 pretty adorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you have the water theme in there too that you can put yeah. in. But sometimes it'll be it'll be the the piece of wood that I'm working with that might spark that idea. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I've seen certain certain figures and grain and different rosewoods and things that might have a fur texture to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That that kind of thing might help. That'll spur me into doing it because I, I like the whole thing to be the concept, I suppose. Right, kind of cohesive and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rather than just one thing in one place, mm-hmm. and all the appointments being rather the same. But, mm-hmm. So we're definitely going for unique, mm-hmm. one of a kind. Well, just to kind of get more, I guess, general about about your background. How long have you been at Preston Thompson? I've been here well, going on about seven years, I think, now. Mm-hmm. Well, I was here just when Preston was getting a solid crew together. Okay. Yeah, and started thinking about manufacturing more than one at a time kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, watched the product really develop at that point. Okay. Into what it is today, which was very much a joint effort with the guys on the floor and Preston. You know, it was very inclusive, you know, very much a shared experience and benefited because of that, you know, bringing these different skills, not people who knew everything about everything, but people who knew a lot about certain things, pulling them in and coming up with a good project, but holding the line as far as 
what the aesthetics are and the build and the sound. It's really all about the sound for us. Mm -hmm. the We the way we construct it and the choices that we make that is the success that we're experiencing. Right. When you have that sound and you're solid in it and you you, you trust it and it's replicable and you're on to you're on to a good thing and then you can explore other areas like this. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I have things at different levels and have something for, for everyone. Yeah, because I mean Preston Thompson makes guitars that are pretty accessible to, you know, touring musicians, people who aren't necessarily going to spend the kind of money that somebody who's going to buy this reptile guitar or the other wildlife series guitars, mm. what, what they're going to spend. But like, so you're really, yeah, you're really catering to a, a very wide market. And um, yeah, it's just, you guys build guitars for musicians at all levels, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. We try to try to do that. Mm-hmm. And so for your background, do you, did you, um, do you build guitars at all yourself or do, are you purely like an inlay artist or a visual well, artist? I, I actually make the necks. Okay. Like, have the necks yeah i've been doing that from the get-go here and that, mm-hmm. that's kind of what was needed out of I me mm-hmm. and they was a bonus mm-hmm. I, I, I do come from an artistic background so i i went to college and uh, i actually did wildlife illustration okay studied that mm-hmm. in Carmarthenshire, south wales mm-hmm. in britain for that, I went to Leamington Spa College and studied design, graphics, photography, textiles, all sorts, you know, mm-hmm. a wide range of printmaking. So, yeah, I've done a lot of painting. I did fine art, drifted around for a long time, <laughs> not really finding an artistic career. Mm-hmm. Before I got into guitars, I was painting houses. But then things changed. There was a big recession. Mm-hmm. And I ended up working for for Breedlove in Ben. Okay. I spent six years there. So that was my introduction to guitars and okay. guitar manufacturing. Mm-hmm. And I did some neck work there, but pri- primarily um, in the Finnish department. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess that makes sense that that would be something that um, somebody with a visual arts, such a, especially a really diverse visual arts background, could end up in. Yeah. So I, I still actually do the sunbursts here too. So that's oh, okay. That's cool. another thing I do, but a lot of design stuff too. That mm-hmm. that comes in because a lot of our work is custom orders now. Yeah. Not so much dealer standard models, and so people really need a little help in negotiating the build and talking about what they want and honing in their ideas, and then. And the inlay thing has just taken off. I've just done more and more as it's come. Mm-hmm. Found my artistic career that I went to college for 30 years ago. <laughs> it's come full circle. And yeah. I think I've actually hit my medium rather than painting. For, you know, I didn't really get into it, but mm-hmm. this encompasses a lot of different design aspects. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that I mean, it's it's always nice to hear somebody like have a, that kind of experience that takes them on kind of a journey before they land in like the spot where they're like, yeah, mm. like your talents are all really coming together in this really beautiful way that mm. people get to enjoy, you know, loads of people get to enjoy in a very personal manner because often it's on their own personal guitar. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are very, very personalized, all sorts of requests. Yeah. Insects. And- <laughs> people's houses and just any any personal thing that might mean something to people so yeah if you look on the website you'll see the range of things that okay yeah do ask for and those are quite accessible to people too Mm -hmm. so they don't have to go outside the shop to look for that Mm -hmm. not every company can do that yeah definitely it's kind of I mean you you and Gert Laskin and a handful of others it doesn't seem to be a terribly common thing to have access to yeah and the fact that i work on the neck myself just makes it all the, the easier to construct and mm-hmm. go third party to negotiate design and things like that so yeah it's like i built up some trust people trust me on you know the advice i might give them and steer them in the in the right direction and stuff because mm-hmm. there are constraints with working on a guitar there's only so much you can do in mm-hmm. such a small space and you know you want to hold somewhat to you know the thompson look whatever that is tasteful i like to think 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but obviously, but can be quite brave too. Not not against doing things, but just won't do anything and everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have some, just some restraint on it. Some... Yeah, you have your own style. And yeah, and like you said, you want things to still stay within sort of the the aesthetic vision of Thompson guitars as they are anyways. So yeah, precisely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can be modern and, you know, on a tradition at the same time. Exactly. I, I, it's really what you do with it. It's yeah, cool. yeah. I think what you do definitely like stays like stays on that line very well. Do you work much with um, with like abalone and mother of pearl like doing this sort of more i guess tree of life kind of traditional Mm -hmm. sort of inlay stuff or do you do you focus more on using woods and things like that yeah no um i i do like pearl for sure and shell and things like that they are becoming harder to get hold of in their Mm -hmm. purest form like big blanks of high quality power it's Mm -hmm. harder to find it's rare and you know there are environmental concerns around that so you know quite often you know we use other products that they're still shell but if you need larger pieces you have to use sheets and things like that right but, well it's only good for certain applications not for every application but mm-hmm. but i do like i like the mix of of different materials i'm going to be honest i like a little bit of pearl with wood and some stone, mm-hmm. other muscles that are more softer palette, perhaps mm-hmm. more pastels, and yeah, I, I do like I, I like the combination. But I think there's a lot you can do with wood if you if you can see something in the wood, even if it's just by an inch by an inch, you know, it can give a great effect. So I, I do enjoy working with the wood. But but again, not all woods that hard, you know. So for headstocks, because it's being finished, you have a lot more leeway what you can do. On right. a fingerboard, a fingerboard, yeah, you need harder materials. It's going to get sanded on, so it's a bit more tricky to work with on a fingerboard. A lot of my work does feature a lot of wood, and people like it. Yeah, it's really beautiful. What's what's the craziest thing you've been asked to to depict? <laughs> Well, I did do a, I'm just not really crazy, but I did a cockroach the other day. <laughs> on Unexpected. Of, yeah, yeah, on the back of a headstock. Did that in black pearl. It kind of looks pretty realistic, actually. It's kind of, you don't, you don't notice it at first. And then you, oh. <laughs> kind of, but that was, um, that was for a guy who owns a tequila making business. And I've actually just done another, I did a, an inlay of a guy harvesting the agave plant on the headstock oh, cool. really detailed oh very cool it's really cool and the, and this guy he wanted a, a cockroach on it because apparently that was his name or when he was young oh <laughs> wants me to tell everybody this but it's out there <laughs> i don't know how he got that name i didn't ask him that but, <laughs> but yeah well. I, don't, I don't care it looked, it looked cool though yeah, no, I, I can imagine that can be well done. Yeah, just tiny little things like that. Mm-hmm. Can be really yeah. personal. That's really cool. Yeah, I don't think I've done, I've done anything too crazy. <laughs> get some odd requests now and again. But... We have one coming up of this plane in the clouds of the tree guitar on the back. It's going to be interesting. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, but... anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm open to anything, really. Mm-hmm. You know, but I can't say I've had anything too outrageous. Yet. <laughs> oh. Not yet. Most of our clientele, they're pretty, they're pretty normal. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think I can't think of too many other questions. Uh, is there anything else that you guys wanted to share about these these guitars? Uh, what do you think? Um, well, these, you know, these are one of a kind. Yeah. And, and also that the fact that if there's someone out there that wants to have a custom wildlife guitar, this is sort of us showing what is possible. Yeah. So for the future. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. possible. Somebody might, you know, say, I love I like lions theme. or I love, uh, you know, we've done sort of an African theme once with the baobab trees and the elephant, but mm, that's true. right. Oh, very so, cool. Of someone having a, 
the idea of our masterpiece series is to ultimately have people bring us some thoughts and we make them their own masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. And this is going to be such a great way to see all the possibilities because it does go beyond just the the head plate and the fingerboard. And so people can kind of see that there are different ways you can integrate those themes into the rest of the body of the guitar. So I think this will be a great, great demonstration of that for sure. Yeah. And it's a showcase of different, mm -hmm. a little bit of different craftsmanship or slightly yeah. different approach. Something yeah, is hard to be original, isn't it? Really these days. <laughs> Uh, nothing's really original let's face it but yeah I do like to try to do different techniques or something someone hasn't seen before like mm -hmm. the road and perhaps the fingerboard where it would be challenging to do you know mm -hmm. you might you don't necessarily see it but perhaps someone who makes those kinds of things would, might appreciate that little extra detail that goes into it and extra work so. for sure yeah. Awesome. Well, personally, I'm very excited because rattlesnakes are my favorite animal. So oh, this is going to be my my, my favorite one. <laughs> well, that's really cool. That's, yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't be a hard sell for you then. No, if only I had the, uh, if I had the money, I'd, I'd be the first, first one to buy it. But <laughs> I, say, like, I know people have phobias about snakes and people mm -hmm. don't really generally like them, but I don't have a lot of time for that, to be honest with you. I, yeah. I think once you get to know them, is it? Yeah. It's, a lot of respect it's instant respect for yeah. these people, you know and they're pretty, yeah all their attributes their attitude to me it's an iconic american animal yeah exactly i mean they <laughs> almost didn't they almost speed out the the bald eagle is like the symbol i think oh i think back so. in the day yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll give you fair warning don't mess with me exactly of. yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and they're just, yeah, I mean, they're such a, an integral part of their ecosystems wherever they are. And it's a shame that they are sort of this vilified animal, but they are they don't want to attack you. They just want to mm. mind their own business and catch some rodents. And yeah. <laughs> and they are beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, yeah, I hope people appreciate that as much as you do. So. <laughs> Me too. And someday, um, hopefully, you'll get to play it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be, I'll be excited for that time when it comes to Nashville. Yeah, it's going to sound real good. I know yeah, that. No doubt. Guaranteed. <laughs> awesome. Anything else you guys wanted to to plug while we're while we're on here? Uh Simon Haycraft inlay um Instagram page. Oh yeah, we'll make sure to link to that. Cuz then people can see a bit more too. I got right, right. A little less busy than the Thompson page, let's say. Mm -hmm. It just focuses on that. So Right. So folks who just want to focus on inlay art can come and follow you. Do you yeah. do you sell any of your art in any other ways that people can sort of like buy prints or anything like that? I really don't. I haven't mm -hmm. had that much time put into it. And I'm I'm kind of satiated as far as artistically here. Yeah. But there's enough projects in the go for me to be satisfied in that way. So yeah, that's great. I'm always, I'm always thinking of other things and then those might get pulled in to guitar projects. That's why people might see something that they haven't seen before or a different look or a different idea. So, yeah, it comes from other influences that we're inspired by, I suppose. Yeah, very cool. Well, awesome. Well, people can follow you and catch more of your work on, on your Instagram and enjoy it for free, I guess. So, yeah, I appreciate you talking to us about it. Thanks for listening to this episode of Talking Guitar. We're expecting the Rattlesnake OM in the next couple of months, and you can bet that we'll be taking lots of photos and videos once it arrives. And as of recording, it is available for purchase. We also have a fabulous Quado and a parlor size 2 in the shop now, which you can check out at cartervintage.com or in the show notes. If you're enjoying these luthier interviews, please take a second to rate and review Talking Guitar on your podcast app or give us a thumbs up on YouTube. It really does help, and I would love to hear your feedback. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at The North American Guitar. And as always, please come back next week for the latest episode.